Let us continue the Bible study from the book of Galatians. Today we will be focusing on Epistle of Paul the Apostle to the Galatians chapter 3 verse 21. Is the law then contrary to the promises of God? May it never be. For if a law had been given which was able to impart life, then righteousness would indeed have been based on law. Galatians 3 verse 21 The law set out the perfect standard by which man could attain righteousness in the eyes of God. But because God's ideal standard was unreachable it exposed man's sinfulness and showed that man could never be righteous in the eyes of God. The law was simply a temporary measure until the coming of Christ. The eternal God and perfect man did not come to abolish or abrogate the law but to fulfill it, which he did on behalf of all who believe on him, by faith. Indeed Paul wrote extensively about our fallen state, but also established in minute detail our freedom in Christ, which delivered us from our slavery to sin. The specific promises God gave to Adam, Abel, Enoch and Noah before the flood depended of faith and by faith these men found grace in the eyes of the Lord and were reckoned as righteous. God's promises to these men still stands and we read about them in the Word of God. The promises that God gave to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob and so many of the heroes of faith in Old Testament scriptures still stand, for they believed God and their faith was reckoned to them as righteousness. God's promises to these heroes of the faith still stands, and found their fulfillments in Christ. And the promises that God has given to the Church which is the body of Christ, following His death, burial and resurrection similarly rests on faith, faith in the only begotten Son of God. And like the heroes of old our faith is also reckoned to us as righteousness. We too are liberated sinners, who are declared righteous by God through faith. And the specific promises that God has given to the Church through New Testament apostles and prophets apply to all who believe on the sacrificial death and glorious resurrection of the only begotten Son of God. The law set out the perfect standard by which man could attain righteousness in the eyes of God. And the law continues to be the standard by which men are convicted of their sin. The law is not contrary to God's word, nor did it set aside his promises to Adam, Abraham, Israel or the church. But the purpose of the law was to give man time to realize that perfection is unattainable by fallen man. The law condemns sinners but can never ever save them. No one from Adam onward could attain to the righteousness of God, as was exposed through the letter of the law, which was on tablets of stone. And because God's ideal standard was unreachable it exposed man's gross sinfulness and showed that man could never be righteous in the eyes of God. The sin of Adam was passed to all his physical descendants. Similarly, the righteousness of Christ is passed on to all his spiritual children. Because we were born into the first creation, through the first Adam we inherited a fallen nature for we were born in sin. But when we were born again into the new creation, in Christ, we received a new nature and were clothed in Christ's righteousness. The old identity we had with the first Adam rendered us slaves to sin but the new identity we have in Christ the last Adam renders us servants of righteousness. The law was simply a temporary measure until the coming of Christ the eternal God and perfect man Christ did not come to abolish or abrogate the law. He came to fulfill it and did so on behalf of all his spiritual seed, men and women of faith who believe God's word. The law is not contrary to the promises of God but demonstrated man's need of a Savior. The law could expose sin but could never forgive sin, for if the law could have been fulfilled by man's righteousness there would have been no need for a Savior to pay the price for man's sin through his sacrificial death and glorious resurrection. The perfect law of God stands fast forever but it was not given to impart life and it was not to be a method by which men could achieve perfection. Salvation and the forgiveness of sin could never be attained by keeping the unattainable law, indeed the perfect law of God declared the death sentence on all men. Salvation and the forgiveness of sin is simply by faith, believe in God and Jesus Christ whom He has sent, for Christ is the end of the law to all who believe. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, 
thank you for your goodness and grace towards the children of men. Thank you that you did not destroy the sinful race that rebelled against you but exposed our sin through the law and then paid the penalty for our sin through the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you that my salvation is by grace, through faith in Him. Amen.